Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my Deluxe Reverb Tone Master Amp. This is the new ultralight digital amplifier that's to simulate or be just like the 65 Deluxe Reissue. <laughs> Today I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I think you might not want to buy this amp and 10 reasons why I think you might want to buy this amp. And the main reason I want to do this video is because I watched a ton of videos about this amp before I made my purchase and I was shocked how many things about this amp that didn't occur to me until I had it. <laughs> and it didn't occur to me to pay attention to until I had it. And I also want to say, before I get started, I like the amp and I'm pleased, I'm pleased with my purchase. However, there are some things I think that you may want to consider before you do the same. Number one is it doesn't have, let's do this, sorry. Number one is it doesn't have an effects loop. And I know the original 65 reissue doesn't have an effects loop, and that's because it's designed not to have that. If you insert it or put an effects loop in that amplifier, you would change the way it sounds. This is a digital amp. There's no downfall to putting in an effects loop. Not only would that give you the option to put your time-based effects it behind the input of this amp, it would also give you a very much needed feature, which is you could use the return or amp in section of that effects loop to use the power section and speaker, the cabinet, to be a monitor for your Helix, your Kemper, your Axe FX, your uh, Quad Core, whatever. Uh, it really seems like a really crazy thing that they didn't think about. Sure, you can use this amp as its intended use, an ultralight digital amplifier that simulates a 65 Deluxe, but think how cool this would look on stage if you were running your Helix through it, you would have a great monitor and you could either use this as the line out to the PA or your, your uh, processor that you were using on the floor. Number two is even though it has a direct out, it has two simulated IRs or impulse responses. And uh, I've already did the modification. You can plug this into a computer and download the cream back speaker and also get the treble mod. If you think this is too bright, you can do those for absolutely free and they're easy. And you just plug in your USB cable to your computer. However, you can't download any of your own IRs or other IRs. And that's only a critique because this is a thousand dollar ish amplifier. And considering the technology of two notes out there, it'd really cool if they had that feature. I ran this amp into my cab M by two notes and it sounded much nicer uh, in the recording with the cam M's features. So it'd be really cool if Fender would have licensed that technology or developed their own technology instead of just giving you this basic uh, system in the back. Number three is there's no headphone jack. It's a digital amp. And again, these are digital amplifiers that Fender have been making for years. They have headphone jacks, they have effects loops. Again, when I ran out to my cab M, I was able to use a headphone jack off the cab M from two notes. Number four, on the 65 Deluxe reissue, you have uh, tremolo and reverb on the vibrato channel. You do not have it on the normal channel. Most guitar players like to plug their pedals and effects into the normal channel. It's a little fuller sounding, more mids and not as bright. And, <laughs> but if you have the 64 reissue, which is a hand wired or the 68 series, uh, they went ahead and modified those amps by putting reverb and tremolo on the normal channel. This amp doesn't have reverb or tremolo on the normal channel, even though it seems like such an easy thing to do. It wouldn't affect the sound of the amp. And hopefully down the road, they'll have that ability like the other modifications you can do where you can just plug in your computer and add that feature. But to me, it sounds crazy. You had an opportunity to make this amp better than the 65 Deluxe. Number five is it has a two-year warranty. The Fender used to offer five-year warranty. I don't know what the two-year warranty is about. I haven't researched to see if they're doing this to all their amps now, but this amp only has a two-year warranty. Issues with that is simple. After two years, because this is a digital amplifier with a Class D power section, you're going to find that most amp techs, I can't even find any to be honest, but I'm sure there's some out there, won't work on this amp. So once the warranty runs out, you're on your own if this breaks. You have $1,000 almost basically into this amplifier. And in three to four years after purchasing, if it breaks, it's just a very heavy or light paperweight. Number six is there's no way to interface this uh, using the ex existing Fender software that they use for the Mustang series or the Fender Champ. And that's a problem because of this. 
The Fender Champ, if you're familiar with that series of amps, it's a hybrid amp of digital and tube, and one of the things you get to do with that amp is plug in your computer, and even though it has a treble and bass control only on the amp, there's a mid-range control, and you can adjust the mid-range and kind of find the sweet spot on the amp, and then save it into the amp. You can't do that with this amp. One of the things, one of my favorite videos, reviews of this amp that I watched before making my purchase was that pedal show, in which they compared this to the real 65 Deluxe. I own a 65 Deluxe and the 65 or 64 Handwired. What I will tell you is this sounds a lot more like the 64 Handwired than it does the 65 Deluxe. But one of the things I noticed in that video was they end up picking the 65 Deluxe. And the main reason is I think they thought it sounded warmer, a little fuller, but they liked the mid-range. Playing this amp and comparing it to the other amps, what I learned is, yeah, maybe they sound a little warmer from the tubes. Maybe there's a little more compression from that. But really, especially the 65 Deluxe reissue, had a lot more mid-range. This is very scooped. It's very much like the, uh, just lows and highs. And it would be really nice if I could add some more mids to this amp. When I ran an EQ pedal in front of it, it really made this amp sound really good. Again, uh, something I would do if I had the effects loop, I would just put an EQ and in, in, in <laughs> pedal in the effects loop and kind of boost the mids a little bit, just a little bit, just to make this amp sound a little fuller. And also when running pedals through it, it wouldn't be as fizzy. Number seven is it's pretty expensive compared compared to its competitors. I think the Quilter is a perfect example of a competitor. When you compare it to like the Blues Cube and other amp fires out there that are really good, some of these amps are $500 compared to the $900 price tag on this amp fire. So again, I think you should consider some lower price alternatives if you are really pushing your budget for this. Number eight is where I'm really going with all of these points, which is it seems like the amp was designed for its own obsolescence. In other words, there might be a V2 coming soon, and if there is, you're gonna take a bath on this version one. No one's gonna to wanna to buy this when V2 has an effects loop, downloadable IRs, reverb and tremolo on the other channel, you know what I mean, and other features. It's just going to be something to consider. So if you're thinking about buying these, I would maybe find a deal, get a used one, or you might wanna wait. Number nine is an interesting one because it's in my positive list, but there's a part of my negatives on there too. It's too light. I didn't notice a problem when it was on my first floor of the house on concrete, it sounded great. But when I brought it upstairs and it was on the, uh, the lifted floor, what I found was the cabinet is so light, the amp itself is so light that it sends a lot of bass into the ground, which is cool but it was just too bassy. So I find I had to dial a lot of the bass out, raise the treble, and it again, got this really scoop sound. And I was able to kind of mod it, modify it and tweak it and get it right in the right spot for me. It sounds really good, but again, it almost feels like it's too light. Uh, so something to consider on that if you're gonna put it on certain flooring. Number 10 is, although I think the amp sounds really good, as I pointed out, and I think they've really nailed a lot of things, it still has a digital tone to it. Uh, I call it the digital chirp. Some players refer to it as a latency in the amp. Now, I wanna say it's really good, just like a lot of the other uh, high-end effects units out there, or amp simulators out there. Um, but it still can be, you can still detect it a little bit that it's simulation that didn't fail to meet my expectations of what I was hoping for. But I think if you're really critical, I think you're gonna be unhappy. So you might wanna try it and make sure you play it first before buying. Let's talk about the positives because it's got as many positives as negatives and uh, maybe more so. The first, of course, positive for me is that it looks. It looks fantastic. Uh, everything from the fact that it looks exactly like a deluxe reverb. I even like the decision to make the tone master just this plate there that you could either remove if you if you have a problem with that or leave it as kind of like a ha I gotcha. This isn't the real deal. Number two is actually one of the negatives is a positive. So like I said, you can't download your own IRs, but what I will tell you is that the two IR impulse responses they give you, the two selections they give you for direct out are fantastic. And if you're not into downloading your own or you're not even familiar with the process of what they even do, this is great. <laughs> did a good job with what they did. I just thought, like I said on the other point, they could have done more. Number three is really funny because I just critiqued it on the negative. It's very light. As you've heard, these amps are super light. This is 24 pounds and uh, it is super light. If you have back problems or knee problems or just lazy, <laughs> I fall into that category. It, it's great. Number four is probably my favorite feature on the amp, which is the reverb.
Tremolo sounds great as well. Fender says the main reason this is expensive is because it has four processors in it and two are just for the reverb. I have to admit, they might be right because the reverb sounds fantastic. Number five is the Fender sound. It has the Fender sound. Although I pointed out Quilter makes light products, other companies, Thomas Blug makes a really light amplifier that you can put into an ultralight cabinet. Those are great sounding amps, but this does, this does the Fender sound. <laughs> is it doesn't have any tubes or anything to maintain. So although, like I said, you want to be concerned after your two year warranty, um, there's not a whole lot to worry about with the amp. Once you buy it, you don't have to worry about uh, tubes going out or any issues like that. One thing I will tell you is if you're having any issues with your amplifier and it's under warranty, I would take it into a service center because like I said, once it's off the warranty, you might have concerns and most likely they're not going to fix anything that's wrong with your amp. They're going to replace it. So if they replace it, you'll have one and you'll have a fresh start. So just be aware of that. Number seven is it is fender quality. And what I mean by that is when you, when you fill the controls, when you, when you, Touch, touch the vinyl, when you check out the amp as a whole, man, it has fender quality. It doesn't feel like a lesser type amp fire, even though this is not made in Fender's facility. The 65 Deluxe series amps and other amps by Fender are made either in the California Corona factory or in the Ensenada Mexico factory. This one is made in a uh, Chinese factory overseas. It's not Fender building the amps. They're obviously having it consigned out or loaned, sent out to have it built. However, they did a really good job of feeling the same way and quality wise, it looks right. It feels good. Number eight is again, something that where it takes it into the stratosphere, why it made me want to buy the amp. There are some features on this amp that the 65 Deluxe reissues and other ones don't have. First, I love this feature on the, on the back where instead of a standby, standby switch, it's a mute switch. When you turn on, the light goes orange. What happens is once you mute it, you don't have any sound coming to the speaker, but if you're running line out into your interface for recording or a uh, PA system or whatever, you don't have any sound coming from the amp, but you have sound coming out of the back. That's really great late at night. If you want to do some recording, you can run the line out into your interface and not have to worry about the speaker. That's fantastic. But that leads me to the other thing, which again is an option that the 65 reissue doesn't have. It has an attenuator in the back. So you can get this thing to not only distort at low volumes, which is great, and you get that really overdriven uh, Fender kind of, kind of crunchy sound that I like. <laughs> But also, you can just make the amp super quiet for bedroom play or practice at a hotel room, you name it. And again, another feature that you don't have on the 65 Deluxe reissue. However, if you have a 65 Deluxe reissue or any of the other Fender amps like that, something you may want to consider is if you get the two notes ca uh, captor, you can not only attenuate it like this, but also have the line out like this. Number nine is really important. This amp isn't just an ultra light amp that you can take to gigs and practice. It's an amp that's du duplicating a type of amplifier. So in other words, if you have a 65 Deluxe Reverb, a real 60s Deluxe Reverb from back in the day, or you have a uh, 64 hand wired, or even the 68 series, this is going to work a lot like those. In other words, take pedals the same way. <laughs> So if you're looking for an amp that's not only light, but a little less to worry about, you know, if, especially if you have a vintage one, this will work. It'll give you the sounds you're really hoping to get. Number 10 is you can find good deals on these. Although I talked about the price of this amp being expensive, $900 and so on. And if you get the uh, the tan model with the, uh, the the cream back, that's a thousand. I'd like to point out that I bought this brand new in a box for $750 from Guitar Center. I didn't even ask for a deal. They just had them on sale. I found a lot of these on sale. So that's why I pulled the trigger and went with it. It's it's a really good bargain at about $700. I can't say the amp's amazing, but it's not supposed to be an amazing amp. It's supposed to be a useful amp for a lot of players that want something different than what's available for many years. 
I hope these lists help you make a decision on whether or not you should buy or not buy or hold off buying this amp. If it did, put that in the comments, let me know. I hope it helps, because like I said, I was looking for tons of videos when I bought this, and I'm, I'm so far, I'm very pleased with my purchase. I'd like to check out the Fender Twin. If that's something you're seriously interested in, put that in the comments as well. I just don't know if my, my pocketbook could handle another one of these for a video, but we'll see. As always, I want to thank you so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear. Today's viewer spotlight goes to Steven, who shows us three things he loves. Know your gear, coffee, and gold top Les Pauls. Thank you again, Steven.